What's up everybody, welcome back to another tutorial and in today's video we're going to be drawing Seto Kaiba with obelisk in the background. Please check the description below for specifics about the cube size, paper size and other materials used during this tutorial. Right off the bat you can see that his eyes are not lined up correctly which should indicate that his head is tilted. We're going to draw his mouth directly below his nose. I started drawing his mouth before quickly realizing it would be much easier to draw the jawline first and then fit the mouth in whatever place is left over. Since his head is tilted, we're going to draw his right ear slightly lower than his left ear. His hair is going to sit directly on top of his eyes. We'll fit in some more details later, but for now we just need to draw a big strand of hair between his eyes and two smaller strands on the outside of his eyes. Drawing the shape of his hair might take a bit of work, so draw lightly with your pencil. That way you won't have to commit to anything unless you're happy with your final sketch. Unfortunately, I have to press a bit harder so it shows up on camera, but that's why I ended up with those ugly eraser marks. Alright, now we can get to work on his jacket. Starting with his collar, we'll work our way out to his shoulders and then start filling in some details. Now we'll draw his necklace. Well, it's not really a necklace, it's more like he's got a shoelace around his neck and on the bottom is a Yu-Gi-Oh card. But uh, yeah, sure, we'll call it a necklace. Anyways, let's go to work on his left arm. I probably should have done a rough sketch of his arm before filling in the details because that's really the correct way to do it. But I ended up just jumping straight to drawing the final product. Okay, so let's draw that Yu-Gi-Oh card, and then I'm going to take a minute to clean up some of the details on his body and his jacket. I actually made him way thicker than he should be. He looks like he gained 50 pounds, so I'll go ahead and fix that. I'll make his arm a little bit thinner too. 
So for his right arm, I'm going to start with the sketch. And that's actually way too wide, so I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit shorter. And then we're going to draw over our sketch with some details. Okay, now let's get to work on the lower part of his body, starting with his belt and then we'll move on to his pants and the lower part of his cape. We'll add another layer of detail to his left arm and draw his left hand as well. Looking at his left hand now, it actually looks pretty good the way that it is. But for some ungodly reason, I felt like it was way too big at the time, and I ended up spending 10 to 15 minutes trying to fix it when there was nothing wrong to begin with. It's a terrible habit, and I feel that my art process would be a lot faster if I didn't get fixated on these sorts of things. Let's get past the inking process and there's still some work that I need to complete on his cape and on his hand so let's go ahead and fine tune everything right now.
For the lines on his hair, try to draw the bigger lines first and then fill the space between those lines. You should be using a very thin pen for this part. The pen I'm using here is actually a little bit too thin, so I'll end up having to go over it a second time. Now I'm going to add some ink over his eyes and even on his pupils to create some shadows under his hair. Okay, and we're pretty much done with Kaibo, which means we can begin drawing Obelisk. And for this, we need to begin at the very top of the page. So for Obelisk, we're going to begin by drawing his nose, and then we'll draw the top of his head. Now the eyes I actually drew higher than I should have, and I made that correction later, but just so you know, they should be lined up just barely above his nose. And that's because we're looking at him from a lower position, not because he's looking up. Okay, so at this point he's starting to look like a retarded angry starfish. Yeah, he looks pretty stupid right now, but I promise it's gonna get much better because in a little bit we're gonna add some more details to the face and he'll look way more sinister. It looks like his chest is crooked here, but you don't have to follow my lead on that one. I was just trying to interpret the shadows on the original, and it looks like that's where the lines are supposed to be, but the original image for this one was actually really pixelated, so it was quite a process to figure out where everything was supposed to go. It gets even more confusing once you start coloring. Now let's go ahead and get to work on the body. I'm going to start with this center piece in the middle of his chest and then expand outward to his pecs. 
Before continuing with the rest of his body, we'll go ahead and draw what I think are his ears, but they kind of look like wings growing out of his head here. rest of his body. His body is quite wide so I'm actually going to use a ruler to make sure that I'm lining everything up from one side to the other correctly. We're going to get to his abs in a minute but first let's draw the outline for his arms and his shoulders. We'll draw a couple of lines leading into his abs from his ribs, and finally we'll draw his abs in the center. By the way, sorry about the camera focusing in and out like this. For some reason, once I zoom out to a specific distance, my iPhone gets confused and doesn't know whether to focus on my hand or the drawing. Alright, so just a fair warning, you guys should probably get ready to be pissed off in a few seconds because I hate to say it, but I forgot to hit record, so I swore I thought I hit record, but I can't find the video anywhere, so I guess I didn't hit it. So how much did you miss? Well, actually a lot, pretty much all the details. But one silver lining here is that you've already drawn the basic layout, so filling in the details should be pretty easy. For his face, I lowered his eyes a bit and made his mouth a little smaller. I basically erased his outside four teeth. Oh yeah, and I skipped over drawing his hand too. Sorry about that. Ah, didn't get to show how to draw his shoulders either. Before moving on to the coloring process, I'm going to create a bit of an effect around Kaiba in order to create some separation from the obelisk character. We'll begin our coloring process with Kaiba's hair. First, we'll use a lighter brown marker to color the whole area. Then we'll go over that with a darker shade of brown. But since we need some precision here, I decided to use a color pencil instead of a marker. Now I'll use a second color pencil, this time a lighter brown, to go over his hair one more time. The bit of marked area I left over will create our highlighted area. To be honest, I wasn't really happy with my choice of color pencils here, so I do end up making some changes a bit later on.
For his skin, I'll start off with E51, and then go over the shaded portion with E21. We'll repeat this process for his hands. For his eyes, we'll fill in the center of his pupils with an ink pen first. Then we'll fill the rest of his pupils with B45 and leave a small portion of his pupil uncolored to create a highlight. I started coloring the shaded portion of his jacket with C2. Then I colored over that with an even darker shade of C3. Now we'll use a dark gray pencil to create an outline around our shaded area. That will help to make it look much sharper. Next we'll use a very light silvery pencil to create the outline for the non-shaded region. The area within this outline will be left completely uncolored. The area outside the outline will be colored over with our C1 marker. We'll use our darkest gray pencil to color in the decorative crest on his jacket, then use a slightly lighter gray to color in some of the area that was left blank. We're going to repeat this process for the rest of his jacket, but this time I'm going to start out by creating the outline with the pencil, whereas before I mistakenly started with the marker. The inside of his jacket is going to be red. We'll start off by coloring with R24. Then we'll go over that with R29.
For the arms, we'll start with the darkest shade, but first, let's create an outline for the shaded area. Otherwise, it'll look messy. We'll shade this area with N7. The next darkest area will be shaded with N5, and finally we'll use N3 for the lightest shade. For the buckles on his arm straps, we're going to use N1. We'll also use our gray color pencil to add some shade to the buckles. Now we'll repeat the same process for his right arm. I actually forgot to draw the straps on his right arm, so we'll go ahead and do that now. So for the Yu-Gi-Oh card, at the end of his necklace, I'm going to start with a light brown E31 and then fill in the inside of the card with a darker brown E35. For the necklace, we'll use E35 as well. For the center of the card, we'll fill it in with a dark gray N5. Finally, we'll shade over the card using the darkest brown colored pencil that we have. It should be an umber color or something similar. For the center gray area, we use a regular black color pencil. For the shirt, we just need two shades of gray. And since it's gray, we can get away with creating the outline with the graphite pencil. After we're done coloring with N7, we'll go over the outline one more time, this time with a thin black fine liner. We'll also use the fine liner to go over the inside of his shirt and his jacket. Finally, we'll color the rest of his shirt using our N5 marker.
not a game. It's a rich thing. We'll use a similar process to color his pants. For his belt, we'll fill the entire thing with our C1 marker. Then we'll use a cool gray color pencil to create our outline and shade within that area with our C2 marker. We'll use the same process to color his gauntlets, but this time there will be a second layer of shade, and for that we'll use a dark gray color pencil. We use the same color pencil to fill in the jewels on his gauntlets. So I'm going to put a little more work into his hair, and then I'm actually going to fix his eyes, because they look kind of goofy right now. For that we'll use our black fine liner. Then I'm going to use an umber brown color pencil to add an additional layer of shade to his face, and to his hands. I'm actually not happy with how his hair turned out, so I'm going to go over it with a darker brown color pencil. Finally, I'm going to go over some areas one more time with a fine liner, then we'll be able to move on to coloring our obelisk character. For obelisk, we'll start off by coloring with our lightest blue, B00. For the darkest region above his head, we're going to color using B45. Below his horns, we'll do our first layer of shade with B02, and outside of that, we'll shade with B45. And we'll just continue to use this process. Now we'll use our B02 to shade over some of the colored area on his chest and stomach before mixing it all in once more with our B00 marker. 
For the darkest regions on his body, we'll actually use a blue-violet color, BV04. As you can see, we're leaving some of the area uncolored, but we'll gradually fill in that area one layer at a time. Okay, we'll put down our blue-violet marker for now, and we'll move on to our C4 Copic marker, which we'll use to go over the already colored uh, blue-violet area, but also to color in the area outside of that as well. Next, we'll use N1 to color in the remaining area. Finally, we'll use a black color pencil to create a hard shadow around the edge and also to lightly shade over the entire area. But notice that as I shade, that I'm shading in a particular direction. Now we'll just continue to use this process.
for the rings around the center of his chest, we'll switch up the color scheme a bit. First, we'll start off with our C4 Copic marker and leave the area in the very center uncolored in order to create a highlight. Next, we'll use our C6 marker. And for the final layer of shade, we'll use our black color pencil. Now we'll return to our previous color scheme starting off with blue violet on the outside and working our way to lighter colors as we work inside. We'll continue to use the same process for the face, starting first with purple and working our way through the grays. I tried creating an effect with his eyes there, but I couldn't pull it off, so I ended up giving up on it. I hope to get better at creating effects like this over time though. It's the main area I want to improve in.
for both of his arms, I'm going to use pretty much the same exact coloring process that I've been using so far. Okay, so before we start coloring his hand, we need to address this transition area between Kaiba and Obelisk. I'll admit that for right now I suck at creating special effects, but we still need to create some kind of barrier. So I'm gonna use a few color pencils for now and make some improvements as I go. I'll mainly be using the black color pencil, but for areas of the border directly touching Obelisk, I also use the purple and blue color pencils. So for his hand, I'll start off again by coloring his darkest shaded areas with BV04. Then we'll transition over to C4 and start mixing in some C6 as well. For his knuckles and the rings around his fingers, we'll return to using B00 and shade over that with B02. We'll shade over the remaining area with C6 before finishing with a black color pencil. For the bottom of his fist, I used C4 and C6 and filled the space in between with a cool gray color pencil. Now 
Now let's return to our previous coloring process and continue in coloring his body all the way to the border. I'm not happy with how our border turned out, so I'm going to color inside of and over the color pencils with our C4 Copic marker. Then I'll color the entire background with V12, before shading over that with a slightly darker colored pencil. It's probably not a good idea to color all the way against obelisk with our purple marker. Try to leave just a little bit of uncolored space to create a bit of a highlight over our character. And finally, I'm going to outline the outside of our obelisk character with our black color pencil one more time. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our final product. Alright guys, that's it for today. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.